All right, everybody, one more time. Uh, I would like to give a big hand for Leah Lasaya to speak about crypto for good, mining with probabilistic hash rate distribution to humanitarian UAV deployment. Hi, everybody. Can y'all hear me okay? Oh, no, what happened? Everything is wrong. Awesome. Okay, so you're going to have to bear with me. I am visually impaired, so I have to use my phone because I can't see that. So, um, as y'all may have known, um, you may have heard, um, I'm the CEO of Astral AR. What the? Yeah. Oh, hey, that happened. Um, yeah, we build drones that stop bullets. That's what we do. And um, about eight months ago, six months ago, I reached out to, uh, well, I, I looked at the specialized hardware that we have, and um, I thought to myself, there's got to be an easier way to get this in. Um, so what our drones do, okay, first off, raise your hand if you want to get shot. 100% of respondents have answered that question, no. So, um, okay. So yeah, um, our drones, I could go into detail. I would like for, I just have to ask, please hold your questions about how the drones do what they do until the social um, events or whatever. Please uh, just keep your questions limited to the cryptocurrency aspects of, uh, of what I'm about to talk about. And if my phone starts not turning off, okay. Is that working? I can't see it. Okay. All right, great. Okay, so yeah. So why are we doing this? This is why we're doing this. Um, we need to eliminate friction to adoption for our technology to the, uh, to the agencies that we are working with. We work with police, firefighters, EMS, we are considered all hazards technology. We work directly with DHS. Yes, we work with the FBI. I use. I used to be a Fed. Um, I was Department of Treasury, IRS. So um, I know, right? Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, so working with bureaucrats and working with bureaucracies, um, I'm pretty good at it. One could say. So. Just to, to put too fine of a point on it, our drones were not originally intended to mine cryptocurrency. They are intended to stop bullets. That is what they're for. We can detect guns and bombs through walls. Uh, yes, we use specialized hardware. It's specialized for their use case, not for mining cryptocurrency. The fact of the matter is, is that we have tiny little flying GPUs that are extremely robust, extremely powerful, as Christy, uh, as Christy mentioned in her talk. Um, they are capable of mining cryptocurrency. They were not designed for it. Um, but the fact of the matter is that th we anticipate that they will be idle for 22 hours a day. We might as well use that for something, like, for example, offsetting their own cost. And that is why I reached out to Christy. Um, I also solicited help from uh, the Monero community, specifically when I identified, first off, that Monero, being ASIC resistant, can be mined with the type of hardware, uh, potentially, uh, that we are deploying um, on our drones. Um, solicited help from the, the, uh, the Monero community, um, especially, especially Mitchell. Uh, Dr. Kravik there um, was very instrumental in ensuring that we would be able to do this in a good neighbor sense, which is what I'm going to talk about. Because when we deploy, <clears throat> yeah, so when we deploy, we will be deploying an enormous number of, of devices. These drones, an enormous number of, dr of drones at saturation. There are 888,000 roughly uh, uniformed police officers alone in the United States. Two per squad car is 1.9 million devices. So we want to make sure that when we do this, we're going to do this in a fashion that does not pony nuke any particular network. Um, that, would be, that, that would be highly counterproductive. Um, another reason why we chose Monero is because privacy is a two-way street. Um, we don't want the agencies to have any undue influence or interaction with, uh, with whatever network or whatever uh, um, pools or uh, um, resources that they're, that they're mining from. Um, they don't want to have it, we don't want them to have it, and we also don't want to create a situation in which we ourselves are, where we have made ourselves a central authority, because we build drones that stop bullets. Cryptocurrency is way left of sideways for our business model. So, okay. So yeah, that's what we're looking at, large scale deployment. Um, our, initial, our initial production deployment, uh, we are soft scheduled for Q2 2020. Uh, 10 regions across the United States, 600 drones, 1,200 operators. This is an, uh, a very large project. We have Project Palladium covers the cryptocurrency aspect of it, but the, uh, the, drone, the drone deployment is actually called Project Isaiah. 
And this is being paid for, the, uh, the hardware adoption is actually being paid for by a, uh, a DHS proposal. So DHS, the federal government, is actually springing for the, uh, for the adoption. Um, the upkeep is, uh, is what we expect to, to offset with the, uh, the cryptocurrency mining. And to be clear, Astral will not be retaining any of these funds. We deploy all of the, all of the proceeds of the mining are deployed directly to the agencies, to the schools, 16 agencies and 19 schools in the Central Texas area already have already signed on for this. We will de be deploying it to those organizations directly in the form of a private grant. Okay, so how do we avoid, really? How do we avoid, like I said, pony nuking? Um, when we are at saturation, for example, the city of New York has, it's, it's one of the largest standing armies in the world, is, is NYPD. Um, and when we deploy to the city of New York in, at saturation, we're talking about almost 75,000 devices for one city alone. Um, the city of Chicago, very similar, 24,000 devices. City of Los Angeles, as you can imagine, there are an awful lot of very large cities and that's just the United States. Um, so we need to make sure that we will, that when we deploy, these drones are acting as, even though we deploy in fleets, that each drone as a miner is acting as an individual agent. It does not have, a, any sense of, of synchron synchronous synchronicity with, uh, with the rest of its fleet, with the rest of the agency. It acts as an individual agent um, in terms of determining what it's going to mine, where it's going to mine, um, and yeah. Okay. And so, and this is how we, this is how we determine this. Um, catch up with myself. What the, that's not the slide that's supposed to show up right now. Mitchell, thank you. <laughs> okay, um, so I'm just gonna talk y'all talk y'all through this. Okay, so let's say we're going to mine currency X Y Z and currency A B C. Okay, um, they have diff there's a different amount of global hash rate for each one. Um, we have ultimately 1.9 million devices. If we just sort of split that roughly 50 50, whichever one of those two hash rates, the, the global hash rates is smaller, is gonna get pony nuked. Um, and we become the problem. This needs to be able, each drone needs to be able to determine um, from a, uh, a, a weighted sense, it has to have a weighted sense of where it, where it should be mining. Um, not necessarily where it will be mining, but where it will probably be mining. Um, and that is what we have determined. And we do this, like I said, we do this deliberately to prevent centralization. Um, we also do this for, from, from the strictly technical perspective. We do this as a form of battery management. The batteries that we get, uh, that we use are, they're considered a national resource. They are high energy density. I can't even tell you where we get them. Um, it's from a research facility somewhere in the United States and they are extremely expensive. They're also unstable um, and keeping them currently cycled is one of the one of the objectives of, as to why we would consider mining cryptocurrency. One of the other questions that, uh, that was fielded earlier was, won't this damage that, you know what, these drones are designed to be shot. <sighs> okay, mining cryptocurrency is not what's going to break them. So, <clears throat> so yeah, that is the entire paradigm behind what we're doing. Um, in terms of working with the agencies, one of the added benefits to what we're doing, if y'all know who Eric Swalwell is, what? Yay! Uh, if y'all are familiar with Representative Eric Swalwell, he is a dark horse ca uh, presidential candidate. Um, cryptocurrency and gun violence are part of his platform, and I mention him simply because he is not the only, uh, the, not the only legislator that we work with, and not the only legislator that we uh, um, that we seek to to put this in front of. We are doing live fire demos with senators and putting this in front of them. When they ask me how much does this cost, this is one of the solutions that I put before them. Um, and when we are demoing this, for example, for a chief of police, they want to know how much this is going to cost, and I'm handing them Monero. It's baked in, and there, the police, like for example, the police department's CFO has made a mental note that there is a problem that they have solved using cryptocurrency. It will be the first. It certainly will not be the last. Um, next, what's everything is wrong. This is a little bit of information um, basically as to how we do what we do. Um, 
I think we're switching out the slides now. By the way, uh, Mitchell changed out the, uh, the header. Um, that drone is not capable of flight. <laughs> yeah, just FYI. <laughs> That's not how a, a multi-rotor with three rotors uh, has to be positioned differently. <laughs> okay. False. Hey, <laughs> awesome. Uh, can I get some help? Anybody? One moment. Okay, Sorry. thank you. <laughs> so anyways, um, you know what? Let's just pause here. Uh, questions? Yeah, let's do that. Questions? Anyone? I can't, if you, if you have your hand up, I can't see you, so just yell. Thank you. Um, I guess it's a basic question on the economics of the whole program. Right. Um, how much, uh, I mean, you're obviously most aware of what the total value of the mined Monero, for example, is uh, in a year period. And then you ask the obvious question, what are the goals in, in, um, in the program of what percentage of that are you looking at using as a way of offsetting costs in the program? All of it. The entire, block, the entire amount? Mm-hmm. So basically for this to work, we need a sizable increase in the price of Monero. Um, Which would effectively allow them to be not taking over 51% of the, of, mm -hmm. the, uh, of the blockchain. Is that what you're saying? We don't necessarily expect the entire cost of the project to be uh, covered by Monero. We mm -hmm. actually expect that, the, that uh, government funding is going to pick up most of this. Um, the fact that we are able to bring private, private grant um, in the form of Monero to the table will increase the value of Monero. We believe that it will also uh, vastly stabilize the network um, in terms of it will basically become impossible to, for example, execute a 51% attack when you have to, when you have to overcome 1.9 million other devices to do it. Oh, yay. Okay. Ow, what the? <laughs> okay, whatever. Um, here we go, yay. And so what this is going through is literally uh, going through the thinking and um, the methodology that we used in determining and confirming that this was going to be the case. And this is what it looks like, like I said, um, this is what we do not want to do. Okay, like I said, when we have uh, currency ABC and currency XYZ, um, if we were to split them for example, 50-50. If we were to distribute them evenly across, um, across currencies, um, there would be a major disruption for some, and others would be uh, underutilized for, for what we're trying to accomplish. What we're actually looking to achieve looks more like this. And so, yeah, and so this is exactly how we, uh, how we determined that we would be able to do this um, in terms of implementing uh, the solution that Christy has, has engineered um, and this is how we were able to confirm it. And this is what it will look like um, when we deploy it. So if that makes sense. <clears throat> and like I said, um, as I've already kind of stepped through each, uh, each of these steps, um, the drones are not, uh, they're not mining um, in cooperation with one another, that's very important. They're only assessing their position in the global hash rate um, as individuals and determining probabilistically, based on that, um, where they will probably land. And that is, uh, that is the probability that we end up with. Why would you do cooperative mining? Because then we would become a central authority. That's the last thing you, you want is, and do you really want NYPD running Monero? <laughs> yeah, me neither. Anybody else? Uh, I, I guess I have two questions. One, so um, what percentage of, say, the Monero network would you associate with the mining capability of your initial deployment of drones based on the current hash rate? And secondly, how, what, from the user interface perspective, are these people going to be selecting their own addresses that they go to, their own pools, or is that all going to be strictly setting? autonomous? The drones are all the drones themselves are purely autonomous. Um, they are we actually consider them disposable. Um, so, 
at the initial production saturation, saturation, we anticipate somewhere between 1.4 and 14% of, uh, of the global hash rate. Um, any more than that, and we would, we would withhold from, uh, from mining, because we're trying desperately to not, to not put a thumb on that particular scale. Uh, you keep mentioning that they'll select which cryptocurrency to mine. What mm -hmm. other cryptocurrencies are you looking at besides Monero? Ethereum. <laughs> I don't know. Should we? <laughs> well, you're going to have to stake eventually once Ethereum moves over. So, so that's a that no, that's an excellent an excellent point, and it speaks towards the. Uh, uh, how, how far we, we have gone to seek to distance ourselves from the implementation. Um, that's actually not a decision that I anticipate making. So based on the hash rate um, that was presented earlier per drone that's capable of doing, how, and, and you mentioned there that you think that they could be such a centralizing force in, uh, of mining, how many of these drones are you going to need? I mean, we're talking millions <coughs> of them. Yeah, actually, we are. There are 800, so, the, okay, let me speak towards how the, a little bit towards how the drones work. The drones work best in pairs. Um, we, we only ever deploy them in fleets of five. Because they work best in pairs, we consider them disposable, so the fifth is literally a spare. Um, so if you think two per squad car, there are 888,000 police officers roughly in the United States, just in the United States. Um, we have so much international interest at this point that the FBI vets it for us because we get some scary people who want our drones too. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, I have a lot of jokes about being stuffed into a sack. Um, so yeah, there are, just, just for the police departments, and this is not counting the schools, there are 76 schools in Hayes County, Texas alone. And the director of emergency services from Hayes County has already indicated that she wants to put at least one fleet of drones in every school in the county. That's a lot of drones. <laughs> um, then there are the fire departments. There are just a, a few more firefighters in the United States than there are police officers, uniformed police officers, beat cops, if you will. Um, there are 14,000 um, fire departments and uh, several thousand fire, or 14,000 fire stations. Um, and several thousand more fire departments. If you think there's, you know, of deploying one fleet per station, um, yes, we are talking millions of drones. Just for the police officers alone, we anticipate that's where we start with the, we start with the number 1.9 million. Yeah. Aren't you glad DHS is paying for this? <laughs> Thank God I know, we don't right? need the Monero price for that. Um, <laughs> I have a quick question. Yeah. Uh, what is to prevent a malicious party from feeding bad pricing information to the drones and then convincing them to attack a network by giving them bad pricing information. So I'm going to draw an analogy here that first things first, um, from the security, we take the security perspective that it is always a matter of when, not a matter of if. Um, thank you for putting that into the universe, by the way. Um, <laughs> I'm looking at you. No, um, and the next thing that I have to say is that the bad guys have smart people too. Um, my ability to stop them is, it starts with my refusal to help them. Um, so that's, that's, my, that's our first step, is that we're not going to make it easy for them. And also, because of the way that the drones are deployed, because of the way that this particular solution is deployed, this is outside of, the actual miners are outside of our control. So if that were to happen, I would ask Christy what the hell just happened, okay? And also, with the understanding that in order for that to happen, that's kind of like messing with a cop's canine, okay? That's, yeah, I, I mean, that situation's probably not going to end the way you want it to. <laughs> All right, well. There's another question. Oh, we have one more. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> uh, hi, uh, how would you update the um, drones? How do we update the drones yeah. or do the drone miner? Yeah, the drone miner. Oh, okay. Uh, Christy manages all of that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, Jim, I'm an engineer, not a sociologist. <laughs> One more. Oh. Una mas. Um, so, some might, I mean, I would think it's naive to think that this being a military technology, that it's it not will, military. It is. 
Mm -mm. I would consider it a military technology. We don't, and I sell them. <laughs> if Seriously, it stops bullets. I understand why you say that. I understand what you mean. Um, there are, we do have interest from DOD and DARPA, but we explicitly do not work directly with DOD and DARPA. We work with DHS and FEMA. But please continue your question. My point is that this having the ability to have an impact on military type events where bullets are stopped or not stopped, you have to expect this is going to get into nefarious hands. Yeah, the bad guys have smart people too. Right, and so um, I just, I guess my question is from a perspective of trying to help people, don't you think that there's a good possibility that this could end up enabling people who, or without being open, being, trying to keep it clandestine, that you're actually enabling people to get a source of defense for nefarious purposes that they wouldn't have otherwise had. So, I guess, why, why wouldn't this be a public technology as opposed to closely, so closely guarded? Um, for one thing, <laughs> so that's a, that's a very nuanced question. One of the things that uh, I have to say first and foremost is that, the, is that the law enforcement agencies with whom we work have asked us to be more discreet um, about how we do what we do. Um, the next thing, I, when they ask us to do something, we, we tend to do it. It's just, I mean, that's, that's just a good life policy generally. Um, but with that stated, they do ask us to do some things that we decline. Um, like, for example, we will not weaponize our drones, period, end of statement. If they, um, if they put the twist on us, I will throw it in the gulf. Um, you can dig it out yourself if you want to do that. I'm not going to do it for you. With that stated, um, the question that you're asking is what happens when this falls into the wrong hands? To which, again, I state, the bad guys have smart people, too. I have, it is outside of my power to stop bad people from doing bad things. What I can do is not help them. Um, it's kind of like saying, tasers are considered less lethal technology. If you use them wrong, you will kill someone. All right, are there any last questions? Okay, I want to give a huge round of applause for Leo Asaya. Thank you.